Let's find the current I that flows through this 3-ohm resistor using the superposition theorem. Now, if you're thinking, wait, multiple sources, this looks messy. Don't worry. The idea is actually pretty simple. The superposition theorem says this. If your circuit has more than one power source, don't try to solve everything at once. Instead, take one power source at a time, figure out how it affects the circuit, and then just add up the results. We use this theorem when our circuit has more than one independent source. That could be voltage sources, current sources, or a mix of both. And instead of dealing with the entire tangled mess of a circuit, we simplify it. Let's quickly go over how to use the superposition theorem. It's simple once you get the idea. Step one, identify all the independent sources, voltage or current. Step two, turn on one source at a time and turn off the others. A voltage source becomes a short circuit when deactivated. A current source becomes an open circuit. Step three, solve the circuit with just that one source active. Step four, do this for each source, then add all the results together. That's it, one source at a time, then add everything up. Now, let's see it in action. All right, let's move on to the actual example. In this circuit, we've got three independent power sources two voltage sources, and one current source. We'll start by creating a sub-circuit that uses just the 12 volt voltage source. To do that, we need to deactivate the other two sources. As we mentioned earlier, a deactivated voltage source becomes a short circuit, basically a wire with zero voltage across it. A deactivated current source becomes an open circuit. No current can flow through that branch. So after making those changes, we end up with a simplified version of the circuit that includes only the 12 volt source. Let's call the current through the three ohm resistor in this setup, IA. Now let's do the same thing, but this time we'll activate the 42 volt voltage source and deactivate the other two. Just like before, the other voltage source becomes a short circuit. The current source becomes an open circuit. That gives us another simplified sub circuit, now powered only by the 42 volt source. We'll call the current through the three ohm resistor in this setup, IB. Finally, let's activate the current source and deactivate the two voltage sources. That means we replace both voltage sources with short circuits. This gives us our third sub-circuit, which now contains only the current source. We'll call the current through the three ohm resistor in this setup IC. Now we've broken the original circuit into three simpler sub-circuits, each with just one independent source. According to the superposition theorem, the total current I through the resistor is simply the sum of the three, I equals IA plus IB plus IC. Next, we'll solve for IA, IB, and IC one by one. You can use any method you like, Kirchhoff's laws, nodal analysis, or mesh analysis, as long as it helps you find the current for each sub-circuit. I'll go ahead and use Kirchhoff's laws here, but whatever method you choose, you should end up with the same final result. For the first sub-circuit, let's use Kirchhoff's laws to calculate IA. We'll start by labeling the currents in each branch of this sub-circuit. The current through the three ohm resistor is already labeled as IA. For the other two branches, let's name the currents I1 and I2. So we've got three unknowns, IA, I1, and I2. That means we need three equations to solve for them. First, let's apply Kirchhoff's current law at this node. That gives us IA equals I1 plus I2. Next, we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to the loops in the circuit. There are two loops to work with. In loop one, applying KVL gives us I2 equals I1 divided by three. In loop two, KVL gives us our third equation. Now we've got three equations. Let's solve them step by step. First, substitute equation three into equation two. That gives us I2 in terms of IA. Then plug the expressions for I1 and I2 back into equation one. After simplifying, we solve for IA and find that IA is two amps. That's the contribution from the 12 volt voltage source. Now let's move on to the second sub-circuit. We'll follow the same steps to solve for IB. First, label the currents through each branch. In this circuit, we again have three unknowns, IB, I1, and I2. So we'll need to build three equations using KCL and KVL. Starting with Kirchhoff's current law at the node, we get IB equals I2 minus I1. This is our first equation. Next, let's focus on the loops. 
there are two loops. In loop one, applying KVL gives us I1 in terms of I2. Then in loop two, we apply KVL again and get I2 in terms of IB. Now we've got the equations we need. First, substitute equation three into equation two. That gives us I1 in terms of IB. Then plug the expressions for I1 and I2 back into equation one. After simplifying, we solve for IB and find that IB equals negative one amps. Don't worry about the negative sign. It just means the current is flowing in the opposite direction from the one we assumed. That's perfectly normal in circuit analysis. Now let's solve the third subcircuit and calculate IC. First, we label the currents in each branch. In this setup, we have four unknowns, IC, I1, I2, and I3. So we'll need to build four equations using Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. Starting with KCL at the first node, we get IC equals I2 minus I3. At the second node, we apply KCL again and get I3 equals I1 minus three amps. Now it's time to apply KVL, but with a small warning, avoid loops that contain the current source because we don't know the voltage across it. So we focus on the two loops that don't include the current source. By applying KVL to these two loops, we get two more equations relating the currents. That gives us a total of four equations, just what we need to solve for the four unknowns. Now you can solve these equations however you prefer. Substitution, matrix methods, whatever works for you. At the end of the process, you'll find IC is one amp, and that's it. Remember, you don't have to follow exactly the same steps I used. The important part is understanding how to break the circuit down and apply the right laws. With practice, you'll be able to spot shortcuts and solve these even faster. Now that we've found IA equals two amps, IB equals negative one amp, and IC equals one amp, we can add them up to get the total current. So the final current I through the three ohm resistor, I is two amps, done. You might be thinking, wasn't that more work than just using Kirchhoff's laws? And yeah, sometimes it is. But the real value of the superposition theorem isn't just easier math, it's about understanding how each source affects the circuit on its own. For simple circuits, other methods might be quicker. But when you're learning or troubleshooting, superposition helps break things down and gives you deeper insight. Hope that cleared things up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.